Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you had a very good week. And well, tonight is the uh, it's Friday, so it's very good. I guess most of you are going to rest tomorrow and Sunday. So remember that we are going to finish classes on Tuesday. So Monday and Tuesday, and we finish this module. And also remember to finish the platform. It's very important that you finish uh, the platform. So let me just show you exactly what are we. And uh, for this weekend, we need to uh, go to the homework 4.7 and then the 4.9. And then if you go to next, you will see the final exam. And remember that this one has four parts. So this is the first one. And then we have the second part that has five questions. And then we have the part three that has five questions. And then you have the part four that also has five questions. So once you finish that part, everybody is done. So that will be it for this week. So. If you have questions, of course, you can chat with me and we're going to check with you out. Good. So we're going to check the attendance. Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. I'm here, teacher. Good. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Blanca Isabel Cunaca de Rodríguez. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Present. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Good evening, I'm here. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Mónica Hueso. Thank you. Monica Wendy Avalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto Carlos Aviles Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. Present. Good. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Perfect. So we are going to continue with the book. Okay. So we are still in the last unit, that is unit number four. That is about loyal. And it says this part, I will be able to discriminate effective from ineffective ways to increase brand awareness. So when you say here, discriminate effective from infective, it's like separate, identify effective from ineffective ways to increase brand awareness. And in the question number one, it says, what is the best way to get customers' attention towards your product? What do you think is that is the best way for companies to get the attention 
of the public. What do you think? I think the best, uh, 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 the best way uh, is uh, the on the uh, net. Well, I believe there are some problems in the audio. I don't know if you can listen to us very well. Excuse me. Okay. So there are many things that we have checked already for, for us to get the attention. Sometimes promotion, sometimes uh, it's like uh, the colors, the wrapping, uh, commercials, marketing, things like that, right? And the next question says, how would you define ineffective and effective ways to increase awareness? What, what do you have in mind when we talk about ineffective and effective ways to increase awareness? What do you think? For me, for the first uh, question, uh, social media. And this time is very, very important. Uh, and the second, we will find an effective and effective way to increase awareness. Um, I, I don't understand too much that that question do you uh, yeah. explain it yeah so actually the question is about that one, how you define ineffective ways to increase awareness meaning that you get the attention of the public or effective ways for you to get the attention of the public uh, on your product ah, okay for me it's the, the it's the same it's the same because uh, we have a uh, we have but necesitamos uh, una, un producto eh, que llame la atención en redes sociales for me eh, it's only way in in this time eh, para llamar la atención a las grandes to take the test. Okay. Okay, very good. So, yes, uh, actually, that is it. I mean, uh, sometimes what happens is sometimes companies take good or bad decisions about uh, the way that they are going to do marketing, right? So, uh, in mind that you, I don't know, for example, I, I remember that I've seen commercials of, of advertising of paintings, colorful paintings in the newspaper that is black and white. So that doesn't make sense, right? So you say the orange and the green, but everything is black and white. So that is ineffective, right? Effective, yes, as you say, is the social media, right? So you, you can get some advertisement on Facebook or with a YouTube or anything. So that is, so depending on what you are going to do and what kind of product you have, so uh, this is going to be the way, uh, the way for you to choose the, uh, the best advertisement way or marketing plan, or anything like that. So there are many, but you need to think about the needs or the public that is going to, that are going to check into this. Good, so Hi. let's do, oh, go ahead. 
hire Yanira Berrios for dancing with your product? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is very productive. Uh, that depends on the public, of course, but she is very famous, right? So <laughs> that's crazy. All right, so we're going to check the uh, exercise two, that is the conversation. Olivia and Leo are brainstorming ideas about branding for Olivia's online business. Read the conversation and take turns practicing. So, as usual, I'm going to read the conversation so you can check the pronunciation, and then we are going to, to practice, of course. So, let's see how it goes. Uh, I'm trying to set an online business selling handmade dresses, but I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. You mean you don't know anything, Olivia? To start, you could stop changing the logo of your business. I noticed you changed it at least five times last week. And fix the spelling in your slogan. Design happiness. That's not correct. I never noticed nothing about that spelling state when I made it. But you know it makes it look original. You mean you never noticed anything? I think you better hire a consultant, Olivia. They will help you with the business. Do you have any pronunciation questions here? Yes. Uh, what is the pronunciation of Leo designing? DC designing? Design. Yeah, designing. Designing. Charging, um, or changing, 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 changing. Mm -hmm. changing. Okay, spelling changing makes slogan. Slogan, yeah. Um, notice, notice it. Noticed, 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 and chant. Change it. Change it. Change it. Okay. Thank you, teacher. It's a pleasure. Any other questions on pronunciation? No one. Well, perfect. So let's practice. Let's see how it goes. Uh, We're going to start, let's say, with... Uh, Victor Reyes and Roberto Carlos. Okay. Hey. I'm going to do. Okay. 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 Start. I'm trying to set an online business selling handmade dresses, but I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. You mean you don't know anything, Olivia? To start your call, stop changing the logo of your business. I noticed your changes this five times last week and fixed the spelling in your, in your slogan. Designing happiness, that not correct. I never noticed, not noticed. Nothing about that that spelling mistake when I made it. I made it, but you know it. It makes it look original. You mean you never noticed anything? I think you better hear and consult them, Olivia. They will help you with the business. Very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Now we're going to listen to Oscar Rene and Ramiro. Okay. Ramiro. Okay. Okay. I am, start? I am. Yes, I beginning. I am trying to set an online business selling handmade dresses. But I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. You mean you don't know anything, Olivia, to start? You you could stop char 
changing the logo of your business, I notice you change it, it at least let's five times last week and fix the spelling in your slogan designing happiness that that's no correct i never noticed nothing about than spelling mistake when i made uh, when i made it by you know it makes i look original you mean you never notice notice anything? I think you better hire hire a consultant Olivia Day with help you with the business. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Now we're gonna listen to Juan Roberto and Oseas. Okay. I am Olivia. Uh, I'm trying to set an online business selling handmade dresses, but I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. You mean you don't know anything, Olivia? You, start, you could stop changing the logo of your business. I noticed you changed it at least five times last week and fix the spelling in your slogan. Designing happiness. That's not correct. I never noticed nothing about that spelling mistake when I made it, but you know, but you know, it makes it look original. You mean you never noticed anything? I think you better hire a consultant, Olivia. They will help you with the business. Very good, perfect, thank you. So now we're going to listen to Maria Julia and Silvia Patricia. Okay, I am trying to sit at an online business selling handmade dresses, but I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. Hello, Silvia Patricia. Uh, sí, I am Olivia. Ah, ok, I'm sorry. María Julia. Uh, no la escuchamos. I see that you're speaking, but maybe the connection. Uh, uh, I, yeah, now, now it's possible. Yeah. Hoy sí? Yes. Ok. Uh, you mean you don't, you don't know anything, Olivia? To start, you could stop changing the, the logo of, of your business. I I noticed I noticed you you change it it's a it's at least five time last week and fix the spelling in your slogan designing ha happiness that not correct. I never notified nothing about that spelling mistake when I made it, but you now it makes it look original. You mean you never notice anything? I think you better hire a consultant, Olivia, that will help you, you with the business. Very good, perfect, thank you. Let's see now. Um, Jonathan Figueroa, is possible for you? Maybe not. Mauricio Rivera and Aida Isabel. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm trying okay. to see an online business. Selling handmade this dresser dresses. dresses or dresses, sorry. But I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. You mean you don't know anything, Olivia? To start, you could stop changing the logo of your business. I noticed you changed it 
at, le at least five times last week and fix the spelling in your slogan, designing happiness. That's not correct. I never noticed nothing about the spelling mistake when I made it, but you don't, you know, it made me look original. You mean you never noticed anything? I think you better hire a consultant, Olive. They will help you with the best. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Veronica, Elizabeth, is it possible for you? Mm, not possible. Jennifer Amaya. Not possible either. Carla Castillo and Sandra Gomez. Hey, teacher. Hello, Sandra. Hello, hello, teacher. Okay. I start. Okay, good. I am try, trying to set online business selling, how many dresses, but I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. You mean you don't know anything, Olivia? To start, you could stop changing the logo of your business. I noticed you changed it at least five times last week and fixed the spelling in your slogan, designing happiness. That's not correct. I never noticed nothing about that spelling mistake when I might, my it, but you know it make look original. You mean you never noticed anything? I think you better hire a consultant, Olivia. They will help you with the business. Very good, perfect. Okay, yeah, we did, we did it. So uh, let's check. Uh, this is interesting. It says I'm trying to set. What is to set? Conjunto. Sometimes it's like that. In Como. this case, it's a verb. Como colocar. Colocar, alistar, something like that. Set. To set something is to put together or to get something ready. Okay, so I'm trying to set an online business selling handmade. What is handmade? Man, hecho a mano. Very good. That is handmade. Uh, dresses, but I don't know nothing. Okay, uh, well, let's check some other things and then we're going to go back to this one. So about branding or marketing. And then it says, you mean you don't know anything. So here, the person, uh, Leo, is correcting Olivia because she says, I don't know nothing. And that in English is not possible. It's not possible to say, I don't know nothing. That is Spanish. In Spanish, it's possible. In Spanish, we say, yo no sé nada. And it's correct. But in English, it's not correct. In English, uh, you can say, I know nothing or I don't know anything. So that is the correction Leo is making. So it's correcting the grammar uh, to Olivia. Okay, and then it says, you mean you don't know anything, Olivia. To start, you could stop changing the logo of business. I notice you change it at least. What is at least? Al menos. Al menos, por lo menos. Five times last week. And fix the spelling. What is spelling? Orthographia. Orthographia. In your slogan, designing happiness. Uh, and that's why he says that one. Fix the spelling of your slogan because happiness is not with Y, it's with I. Okay? So uh, it's not correct. And then she says again, I never noticed nothing and about that spelling mistake when I made it. But you know, it makes it look original. And he corrects Olivia again. You never notice anything. So when we use nothing, we cannot use something negative here. I don't or I never, for example. Because nothing in English is already negative. 
Okay, so that is the correction. I think you better hire a consultant. What is hire? Contratar. Very good. Consultant. What is a consultant? Consultor. Very good. That is it. Uh, they will help you with business. Uh, do you have any questions here? Okay, so let's check the exercise three. That is, of course, according to uh, the conversation. Read the conversation again. Write the corrections Leo made to Olivia's sentence. So uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes just for you to check into that one, but it's something that we already did. Okay, so let's make it. Okay, so the first one says, I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. What is the correction here? The correction is, uh, don't know anything. Perfect. So you don't use nothing, you use anything. And the other one says, I never noticed nothing about that spelling mistake. What is the correction? You never notice anything? Perfect. That is, again, not nothing but anything. Good. So now we're gonna go to the grammar. How to avoid double negatives. That is the name of that mistake, double negatives. Um, let's see. Ernesto, could you please help me reading this exercise there? Yeah. All the chart. The teacher, uh, number four. Uh, look at the examples in the box. Then complete the exercise below. Two negative in a sentence are considered ungrammatical in English. The recommendation is to avoid using them since the result is that a statement like, I don't know nothing, could be interpreted differently as I don't know something. Um, contrast, and um, we unrelated related to the benefits of our product. We don't publish anything unrelated to the benefits 
of our product. The company sales after the event. The company didn't get any additional sales after the event. The expert about the drastic change of image in our product. The expert never said anything about the drastic change in ima image in our product. Okay, very good. So this is now a double uh, negative. And we need to avoid those. Do you remember what is avoid? Evitar. Evitar. Very good. So we need to avoid double negative. So two negatives in a sentence are considered ungrammatical. It's not correct. So the recommendation is to avoid using them since the result is that statement like I don't know nothing could be interpreted differently as I do know something. So for example, in the first one says we don't publish nothing unrelated to the benefits of a product. So since we use here something negative, it's not possible to use nothing because nothing is negative already. So we have to use anything instead. We don't publish anything unrelated to the benefits of our products. The other one also it says, uh, the company didn't get no additional sales after the event. So it's not possible to use the two negatives, didn't, no. We have to use something like, the company didn't get additional, any additional. So any is going to be correct if you use a negative. Uh, the company didn't get any additional sales after the event. And the last one, uh, the experts never say nothing. Again, this is double negative because never is also negative. So uh, the experts never say anything about the drastic change of image in our products. So these are only a few examples, but that happens also with other ones. So for example, um, you cannot use didn't with uh, nobody. So it's with anybody and so on. Do you have any questions about this uh, grammar? It's clear, teacher. Perfect. So let's practice. We're going to do the exercise number five. Uh, correct the double negative and mistakes in each set according to the chart we have on the top. So I will give you a few minutes for you to finish the exercise.
No. Okay, so let's check. Number one, it says the department doesn't know nothing about branding. How will be the correction of this one? The, the department doesn't doesn't know anything about branding. Very good. That will be it. Doesn't know anything. Excuse Number... me, Ernesto, I can hear you. No, no, no. Very good, very good. Nice. Excuse me. Excuse me. No, good, no, no. no problem. So number two, it says the manager never tells us nothing about the plans to improve the brand of the business. For, for me, teacher, the manager never tell us anything about the plans to improve the brand of the business. Very good. That would be it. The next one, uh, next one says, I don't have nothing against uh, billboards, but the truth is they are too expensive. So what would be the answer for that, the correction? I don't have anything against billboard, but the dirt is they are too expensive. Very good, perfect. I don't have anything. And number four says, we didn't get no increase in sales after advertising on Facebook. Who is going to be that one? We didn't get any increase in sales after advertising in Facebook. Very good. We didn't get any increase in sales after advertising on Facebook. And the number five, it says, the customer don't want no change in prices. How's it going to be that one? The customer don't want any change in prices. Very good. Any change in prices. So this is very important because, uh, I mean, for us that we speak Spanish, we need to be careful about that because in Spanish it's correct. So if you say, I don't know nothing, that is Spanish. It's not English. And I mean, then when you are in New York speaking with somebody, the people, they don't understand. Hearing in, in Spanish, if somebody says, I don't know nothing, or I don't want nothing, that is something very common. Yo no quiero nada. I don't know nothing. In Spanish, we understand. Ah, okay, okay. But if you say that to a person that speaks only English, they don't understand. They say, what? Well, I don't know. I don't get it. They don't get it. So it's it's very important. Okay. Yeah. Any questions here in this part? For me, no question, teacher. Very good. Okay, so exercise six says, run the following tips to improve brand recognition. And there are some uh, improved tips. Provide great customer service, consistently remind your target. I'm gonna give you the, a minute for you to check into that one, okay? So you need to put in order what are the most important, so the most effective. <laughs> The most effective is going to be number one, and the least effective is going to be number five. So choose, and then we're going to check together, okay?
Okay, so let's analyze. Of course, this is going to depend on your perception, but let's check all of them. For example, the first one says provide great customer service, uh, consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business, develop a heartfelt story that speaks to why you are in business, provide value, exceed their expectations, and use the same logo in all your marketing materials. Um, let's see if I can find some words. Remind, what is to remind? Recordar. Recordar, okay. And a heartfelt story, what is that? Una historia sincera. Sincera, yeah, something like that. A story that that has a lot of feelings, right? So people get sentimental and they can mem remember anything. And what is expectations? Expectativas. Very good. Okay, so now we have here five tips. But in your opinion, which one is the least effective, the number five? What is number five for you? For me, provide value, excel, their expectations. Okay, provide value, exceed their expectations. And the rest of the people, what do you think? Yes. I think. I agree. Very good. Number five. So what about number four? Okay, for me, consent. Consentedly remain your target market that's your heart actively business. Okay, consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business. Okay. What about the rest of the class? You agree. Yes, Very good. Agree. Nice. What about number three? What would be number three? Develop a healthy story that speak to who you are in business. Develop a heart. It's in my opinion. Okay. To so develop a heartfelt story that speaks to why you are in business. Everybody agrees on that? Okay. What about number two? What do you think is number two? And number two, you still sell logo in the your marketing material. You sell yeah. logo in todo. Yeah. yeah. So use the same logo in all your two. marketing materials. Okay. So, and the number one then is going to be? Provide great customer service is number one. Best mm. in life. Okay, provide great customer service. Okay. Actually, yeah, all of those are very important. But yes, depending, I believe that depending on the product and the market and what you want to achieve, uh, one might be more important than other ones. Uh, for example, provide great customer service. That is very important, right? A lot of people, a lot of people, they prefer to pay more money if they, even if they're going to have great customer service. So they prefer to pay more. Right. So in mind how important is we know the money is very important, but some people they say no, I, I prefer that the people they treat me well, that they give me the service that I deserve. Uh, even if I have to pay more money. I, so huh? I agree with with your comment, teacher, because in the service sector, uh number one, just yes, provide great customer service is a the, the big deal is a great customer's service. For example, in a, in a restaurant, um, yes. uh, just in, yes, in yes. a hotel. I, in, my, in my class, it's, it's, it's restaurant, hotel, it's a service. Definitely. Entonces, por eso, sí, por, por eso es el número uno. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, I agree. I agree, Sandra. Very good. So, uh, yes, there are many benefits on providing great customer service. Do you remember that we were checking an article about that one, right? So, some benefits is that when you, as a customer, you receive a very nice customer service, uh, you uh, you tell your friends, right? You tell everybody, hey, you know, this restaurant, this store is very good. The service is amazing. They are very nice. So, yeah, it's some, some things that but you need to invest. Some of the problems that we have is that sometimes the companies, they don't invest. They don't train people. Right, so they are very, very good when they are uh, telling people. Uh, so, for example, when you call in the call centers, right? Sometimes there are companies that they have very good customer service, but there are other companies that they are very bad. Right? So they tell you, for example, a friend of mine, he was telling me that he called Pizza Hut uh, a few days, and he was saying that on the call, on the call. He was asking some things and the woman on the phone said, she says, no, that is not possible. And he said, well, I, I, I requested, I called before and I know this was, no, it's not possible. So he was very angry. Uh, but if you go to Pizza Hut in the restaurant, you see that the customer service is nice. Right? I mean, people are trained. They go, they laugh. They tell you, what do you want, right? Is everything fine, everything okay? So the contrast, in, in mind, that is in the same company, in the same company. Uh, on the call, it was a very bad experience, but in the restaurant, I believe that everybody will have a very good experience. Why do you believe that happens? Why a company can have two different services I mean, if it's the same company, why that might be happening? What is the reason for that, in your opinion? Yes, Ah, nobody. Well, in my opinion, it's because different departments are managed by different people, different management. And sometimes one department is more engaged. Uh, they really want to follow the mission and the vision of the company. Because you know that it's hard. I mean, it's, it's expensive. Those pizzas are expensive. The quality are good. Uh, it's better also. I, I don't know if you, you have noticed that one. If you go and eat, uh, if you ask pizza in delivery, it's good. But if you go and eat in the restaurant, the quality of the food is better. It's much better. So in mind, there are two examples on the same company. So it's because of that. They are more strict. Uh, they have different management. So the concern is like, we are not in front of people, they are going to order. Sometimes they don't get trained. Uh, but this is very important. I believe that a lot of people, they don't like when you go, uh, for example, one of the companies that is very famous about a negative perception of the customer service is Claro, Antigo, and all those things, right? Um, but when I go there, I remember that I have a very good service. Yeah, the problem is that sometimes we have to wait a lot of time. Um, not enough people, but that is not bad customer service. The people, they are nice. They treat you very well. They give you the information you want. They tell you what is possible and what is not possible. So um, it's interesting. It's interesting. Though. But you are right. Uh, great customer service. Do you remember an example when you got very good customer service? Will you please share with us? Something that you say, oh, my goodness, this is very nice on the customer service. Do you remember?
I remember, I remember teacher, when I visited the the restaurant. Um I I don't remember the name. Um I ate milk, milk. Um, milk is from from. I don't remember if it's Wendy's or or Burger King. I don't know. It's a hamburger, right? No, but no. The 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 food is not is not hamburger. Okay. It's a a beef. Okay. Uh, but I don't remember the the the, the restaurant. Uh, um, but the, the service was very very good, good attention, uh, very very far, very very fast. Uh, the attention, uh, the food is was pre was prepared very fast. Uh, but I don't. I don't remember the the name. Okay. Uh, but it was a good not, experience. Good experience, but in other moment, I. So voy, voy what, a recordarla. what happened that it was a very good experience? So you say that it was uh, very fast. Uh, yes, in the, in, the, in the first mo the first moment. When I put my my feet in the restaurant, the first person, uh, the attendance is was very good. Um, please go ahead, uh, sit down in this in this in this um, in this chair, good table, a table for two persons, uh, very good attention, and the and the when. I I I gave my order. the The food was preparing very fast. Okay, very good, perfect. So that happens. I remember, for example, with the first time that I went to the Sabines, and they prepared a sauce there in front of you, and they were very nice. That was very very interesting, very good. Any other example? Yes, similar a uh, Ernesto. It's a restaurant in San Salvador, uh, Hacienda Real. It's very good. Customer service number one. Desde que it, llega. All right. <laughs> Hasta el it's, final. I visited, I visited that, that restaurant. Uh, uh, it's expensive, but the attention is very, very good. Very, very elegant restaurant. Very good. Yes, it's expensive, but but uh, vale la pena, teacher. It works. Okay, it works. Yes. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, you mentioned something very important. Uh, it was expensive, so you pay for that service. As I was telling you, sometimes people prefer a very good service, good good quality, uh, and pay a lot of money. So about something. What about the opposite? Uh, do you remember bad customer service experience? The opposite restaurant that don't provide great customer service. Uh, I have several. <laughs> uh, look, look, in the local restaurant is 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 most possible uh, because. Uh, the people that serve in, in this local restaurant uh, don't don't have uh, different skills. Uh, is don't have good attention. And yes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. There are many places where the service is not good. Right. I mean, it's very basic. What do you want? Okay. And sometimes you have to wait a lot of time for food. Sometimes it's not what you order, or the food was not good. I mean, that happens. That happens sometimes. Any other opinion of bad customer service experience?
not uh, more examples. All right. So the next one says consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business. What do you understand about this? What is that? What is this sentence? What is the meaning of this sentence? For me, teacher is that uh, uh, that the customer is make clear that uh, my business is active in the market and have a position in the market with different strategy as marketing and and made the position the the my my brand uh, in the different uh, uh, middles of the communication or or social media uh, but the the consumer uh, that help declare that uh, my business is actively very good so that is it so consistently means that repetitively, right? You always do it that one. And you remind people, I mean, your target market, the people that you are there, that you are here, that this is the company, that this is the service, that this is the product. So that's what happens. And an example of that one is the advertisement, the commercials on the TV, uh, the radio spots, all those are exactly so. Yeah, you know the product already, and you know uh, the quality of the product. But they con constantly are telling you, right? Uh, this is the brand. This is the product. Good. So the other one says, develop a heartfelt story that speaks to why you are in business. Do you remember advertisement that I with a lot of feeling that? For example, we were speaking about memory. What do you remember about commercials? This is exactly that, right? <laughs> the commercial Pepsi few years ago with the with the punk, uh, the Queen, the Queen group. Mm -hmm, very good. Yeah, I might that is that is heartfelt stories like that one. So they show you something and you Relate yourself. The Jones, Britney Spears, sing the sing this song, very 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 good commercial. Exactly. So that's what they do, right? So, I mean, singing and having pop singers there doing that one has nothing to do with the quality of the product. But they try to relate. They try to put the feeling. Yes. Coca Cola is an expert in that one, right? You remember about. Cola is like all oh, the beers and all oh, the Christmas and all oh, his heartfelt story. They are giving you something so you relate your feelings with the product. Mm -hmm. That is it's very interesting, right? So the other one says provide value, exceed their expectations. I believe this is very important actually because sometimes, I mean, do you remember when you bought a product, you needed something, and you go to the supermarket or to the store and you bought a product, but the product is better than you expected. So you pay a price and you say, oh my goodness, this is very good. This is very nice. So this is exactly that one. You provide value. You exceed the expectations of the customers. They pay for something and they say, oh, this is amazing. Do you remember experiences like that? That you purchase a product or a service and that you say, oh, this is very good. Do you remember anything like that? I don't know, teacher, but I remember when I I bought my hair headphones, headphones, uh, Huawei brand. Uh, in 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 that moment, uh, I really think the product 
it's an amazing product. And the sound is very good uh, without without a cable. Wild. Wild, yes. And it's the, for me, is the other experience. Uh, yes, teacher, yes, teacher. In this, in that moment, it was an amazing experience in this, in this, in that store. Very good. So that happens sometimes. I mean, uh, you pay, I don't know, $20 for a product, but then you realize it's a really nice product that you want to have forever, right? So that happens sometimes, and, and that is this, provide value, exceed their expectations. And the last one is very basic, right? You use the same logo in all your marketing materials. So yes, they... I, huh? I remember when... when uh, I uh, I have I I have the a paid for the product. The sales the sales person uh, mentioned if if you if you provide, please go ahead. Uh, and I'm happy in this moment. And that is it, right? So when you are happy about the product, when you say this is amazing, that is when you exceed the expectation and. Uh, yeah, it's it's a feeling that is very nice, right? It's, it's something unbelievable. Uh, as I was telling you, the last one is very basic, right? The brand, for example, Nike, they use that one, right? They have the logo everywhere in their products. You just see something, a shirt, just with the logo, and you, and you know about quality, you know about the brand, you know anything about that one. So. Uh, that is a very good example. So as you can see, there are different strategies, right, to reach the people. Good. Any questions so far? Not teacher. Good strategies. Yeah, very good. Yeah, let's do this one. Uh, it says, uh, I, I will be able to describe my journey in the loyalty pyramid from indifferent to committed customers uh, of a renowned local cloud services. Okay. Do you remember what is renowned? Renovado. Renombrado. It's like Renombrado. Okay. Reconocible, algo famoso, something no. like that. So how passionate are you about the brands you consume? Are you passionate? Do you have a brand about anything that you say that is my brand? Do you? <laughs> when I played football soccer, uh, I I loved uh, buy uh, shoes, Adidas brand. Yeah, Adidas is a very nice brand. It's one of my favorites, to be honest. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, sometimes I mean, the shoes are very nice and uh, the colors. And I mean, they know what to, they do. I was checking in a in a TV commercial, or a, a, a documentary, or something. But they have, uh, they have like a machine uh, that designs that one in a computer. I mean, if you want your own pair of shoes. Uh, unique just for you they can build you that one of course that is very expensive right but you decide the colors you decide many things uh, I mean that is imagine the experience if you are really crazy about tennis shoes imagine the experience of creating your shoes only for you oh my goodness and of course they are comfortable and the design they design uh, everything so you can move, run, make sports uh, very smooth. I mean, that is amazing. So, very good. Okay, and the next one says, do you feel these products define who you are? Not, ne not necessary, teach uh, teacher. Not necessary, but... Uh, Currently, uh, this happens. The product defines who you are. 
Yeah, sometimes that happens. Some, I mean, mm -hmm. always you are related with the products, right? I mean, if you go and buy a perfume, uh, you are looking for specific brands and for specific scents, right? That are related to you. Maybe you don't feel that they define you, but they represent you. Maybe that is the point. That they represent who you are. So that's why sometimes we link the product, the feeling that we have for the product, right? It's exactly what happens with the political parties or with the team soccer, right? You know, here in El Salvador, people are crazy about Barcelona, Real Madrid. And they feel it and they are very crazy about that one. So it's part of that. They relate to that one. It's very, very hard. I mean, people in Spain, the, the soccer players, they don't know you, right? They play the soccer match and that's it, all right? So it's very interesting how the psychology happens in these kind of things, right? Good, let's do the exercise. It says building vocabulary. The following words describe the stages that customers go through as they build a loyalty to a brand, a product, or organization. Match the stages to their corresponding descriptions. So I will okay. give you a few minutes for you to finish the exercise and then we're going to check, okay? Thank you.
Okay, so let's check. Uh, what will be the first one? You remember? The first one, the first one that the that the concept. Uh yeah. The, let's okay. say for example the first the cost the concept. Okay, the concept customers being com comparing the brand with others to see whether it delivers. On its potential, for me, teacher, I think is bonding. Bonding. Everybody agrees on that one. Bonding for customers begin comparing the brand with others to see whether it delivers on its potential. For me, presence. Uh, presence. I don't know. Okay, we are between bonding and presence. Uh -huh. Two options. Yeah, let's see the next one, okay? Uh, okay. Who give more? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to more. vote here. <laughs> but, but I think that the um, the presence is uh, the board because uh, it is the the, uh, the the comparing the the brand with other is. Uh, I have presents that uh, are prepared brand. For that, I think that this may be the presence. Okay, very good. So let's check the next one. It says, customers are beginning to associate the brand with their emotions and with their sense of self. What do you think is that? For me, it's bonding. Actually, that For is bonding. Me, yes. Yeah, that is bonding. Customers are... Uh, beginning to associate the brand with their emotions. So it's the bond that you create, a link. Okay, the next point says, customers start to think about whether the brand meets their wants and needs. Relevance? Relevance, what do you think? I don't know, teacher. I have a dude between Relevant and present for this concept. Okay, okay. So present still there that we don't want where to put it, right? <laughs> okay, the other one says consumers have determined that cost, advantage, and performance are all at the levels that they're happy with. What do you think that? Advantage. Advantage. Very good. Yes, agree. I agree. Yeah. So let's check the number, the last one. So here we are going to decide, right? The customers are aware of your brand, but little else, a little bit, not that much. Relevant. Relevant. Everybody agrees on this? Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like like that one. So and there are other presences here. So bonding is on the top, but that is the first one. So can you see the bonding is the first one, right? Then we have uh, it's going to be exactly the same that we checked before. Do you remember that we checked something like what was the the part of that one? The pyramid. The pyramid, yeah. We're not going to check into that one, but we're going to do an exercise now. Okay, since we are speaking about loyalty, um, and I see that this is something that we've been checking before uh, all, all this uh, week. What we're going to do is we're going to, to try to research in groups. We're going to research about two or three brands that are the ones that have more loyal people in the world. Brands that people uh, feel feel that they are their brands very famous brands that you feel that 
are the most loyal ones. And why? Why do you believe that people really relate with these brands? So we're going to make some groups so we can research and discuss and then tell the class about the brands that you want to share, okay? Okay, teacher, national and international uh, brands. Yeah, national and international brands. Okay, research two or three, mm -hmm. and why? Why do you believe that these people, these brands have a lot of people that are loyal to them? Okay. Very good. So I'm going to do the groups and let's check here. Okay, here we go.
Okay, we're back in business. Let's see how it goes. The group number one, I guess it was Juan Roberto and Sandra Gomez. Let's see. What did you find and what did you discuss? Okay, uh, Sandra and me are talking about Apple and the brand Apple. Apple is a brand that have a lot of products. Uh, for example, iPhone, iPhone, iPod, iPad, uh, iWatch, and the thing of that loyalty of his customers is for innovate each year. New products, new technology. Uh, I mean, ours are there are people that think Apple doesn't innovate, but but Apple sales are good this year. Okay, is Nai Nai is an is a recognizer brand not only in footwear, but also in sportwear for people who exercise the quality and warranty of what they. You said to do a sport is important. Brian, you said be two thousand of people as all social status. Is that <laughs> very good? So both brands are very popular and they have a lot of followers. By any chance, did you get to analyze why people are following these brands? Okay, no problem if you did. No problem. So the next one was Oseas. I don't know if you were with somebody. Maybe not, right? Okay, uh, then we had Blanca and Carla Alejandra. Okay, teacher. With Blanca. We are talking about uh, three brands. We found these brands are Coca-Cola, and we think that have very people loyalty because of his taste and the advertising they, they have and, and also for the affordable prices. And the other brand is Apple. I uh, we are talking about the quality, the designs, and also for their own brand. People, when when people talk about Apple, well, it's a big deal. Talking about Apple, have an um a cell phone or any other of these products. I don't know if Blanca. Uh, we say the um, yes yes um, house uh, brand is Diana uh, Diana is 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 really the person or or, or the person the people um, are are loyal to the brand for variety. Uh, different types of mouth mouth prices uh, price and and presentation size for uh, the people is is, is, is um, loyal uh, loyal the, the brand Diana thank you very good perfect uh, yes, these brands, and the good thing is that you were able to identify why. I mean, there are different situations. That happens, of course, we need to analyze more in deep if we really want to go to the roots, but very nice job. Very good. So the other one where, uh, I guess, Ernesto, Maria Julia, Oscar, and Roberto, a lot of people in this group. Okay, okay, teacher. Teacher, with... Roberto, Oscar, and Maria Julia uh, research in the internet. Uh, what uh, what uh, this the loyalty brand uh, that people feel? Uh, and the list mentioned a product uh, or brand. Amazon, number one. Apple smartphone, number two. Facebook, number three. Uh, number four, Samsung cellular. Number five, Apple computer. Uh, the sixth, 
this brand, I don't know, Sapos. Number seven, Hyundai. In the number eight, uh, the Kindle. But in this moment, teacher, uh, Robert mentioned about the first brand. Go ahead, Roberto. Okay, thank you. And the first brand is uh, Amazon. Uh, the, with the, the ranking that is uh, mentioned for Ernesto, um, Amazon is a company that held uh, the presence in the world in the worldwide, and uh, which facility the purchase of the product time is the house of the people uh, has loyalty with the this company. And this company is uh, maybe some new because the the shopping online uh, uh, maybe 10 years ago at the start and uh, is be made very easily that uh, they can shop uh, anything uh, online and the, ben the, the more uh, advantage that help is uh, you can uh, Wait in your house, in the comfort of your house, don't have to out any place or job that you, uh, anything that you want. Is for that, I think that the Amazon uh, has a loyalty of his, of his customer. Okay, very good, interesting. But very good, Roberto. And uh, the Maria Julia mentioned that the two loyalty brands, Maria Julia, go ahead. Uh, I start. Uh, in, in my opinion, is Apple is a international recognized recognize brand with with a product such as a notebook, iPad, iPhone. Uh, for uh, Apple is a for for example. Uh, statistic statistic show that uh, for 90 percent of um, iPhone buyer is remain with uh, apples this imply this implies that the percentage of customer purchase purchase is um uh, an iPhone whose pr previous smartphone was also an iPhone it remains stable. The, the iPhone is one of the mobile phones that generate the most loyalty among its, its users. Is user uh, your your customer is a loyalty for brand apples? Okay, interesting. Very good. Yes, for for me, teacher, uh, the the third loyalty brand is Facebook. Facebook, as you know, is a very popular uh, social media for the young and old people. Uh, in this brand, Facebook is very loyalty, loyalty brand uh, for the others, social media. Uh, this is my loyalty brand example. In the last one, uh, Oscar have the other, the other, the other loyalty brand. Go ahead, Oscar. Sorry, it's my yeah. Yes, uh, we follow brands because they are high performance. It's Nike, for example, is durability yeah. and uh, loyalty and and in the branding. For example, another another uh, Samsung. Samsung is uh, different products, the high quality, 
a smartphone, for example, um, TV. Uh, <coughs> AirPods, for example, is very is very quality. Accept uh, many people are uh, uh, or the world. Okay, very good. Interesting. I I uh, have you noticed that the most common brand there is Apple, right? I mean, Apple is very very popular. They are. Uh, I mean, maybe here in Latin America is not that popular, but in the United States, in North America, let's say in Europe, is very very popular. So. Uh, interesting. Very good. Okay, so uh, we're going to finish the class for tonight. We have a homework for next Tuesday. That is the last day of class. Okay, you are going to do a presentation about any topic that you want to present, whatever. All right? So anything that you want to present that is interesting or that you like or that you check that is, I don't know, Anything that you want to present. It can be something personal, something that you saw like a product. It can be like a situation. It could be uh, something in history. Uh, it could be uh, whatever you want, okay? So it's going to be for uh, the last class that is on Tuesday. Okay, teacher, how many times for the presentation each, each one? Mm, yeah, I mean, five minutes is good enough. Good. Very good. So let's check the attendance and then let's go to bed, my friends. Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. I hear the teacher. Good. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Blanca Isabel Tunaca Rodriguez. Present. Good. Eric Enrique Reyes Martinez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Good teacher. Good. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Good. Maria Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Monica Wendy Ávalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Here. Good. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. And Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present teacher. Good. My friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a very nice weekend. Rest a lot. See you on Monday and dream in English. See you Monday. Rest a lot yeah. too, teacher. Have Thank a you. Nice night. If you. dry, if dry, don't drink. If ah, drink, okay. if drink, please invite. I'm very hey, good. Jack Daniel, honey, Roberto. Yeah. <laughs> okay, take care all. See you. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jennifer.